And welcome everybody to Haunting Live podcast and uh, we've reached a milestone here at Haunting Live. We are now on season three so thank you everybody so much for following us throughout our past seasons through season two and our first season in season one. We appreciate all you guys following us on our social media and checking out our posts and our episodes that we post each and every week with a new guest here. Uh, Just like today we do have a guest here for our very first episode of season three and our guest is Blue Moon Cottage. We welcome Charlene and she's going to be talking to us today a little bit about her Reiki that she does, uh, a little bit about her teamwork she does on her paranormal team and about spirit attachment as well. So all that sounds really interesting and we'll get to her in just a moment. Uh, But thank you guys so much for following us and uh, don't forget to like this video on YouTube as well as subscribe to our channel if you're new here. Uh, And if you like our content, uh, don't forget to follow us each and every week right here live on YouTube. We have a new guest each and every week that talks about different topics in the paranormal field. So uh, with that, let's get today's guest up here and talk to Charlene. Hi, Charlene. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for being our first guest on season three on Haunting Live. I appreciate you taking your time out to talk to us today a little bit about what you do. Well, thanks for having me. I'm just excited to talk to somebody without wearing a mask. Yeah, it's wonderful to be able to connect this way. It's opened up so many doors for us as well to meet new people and uh, share what you guys do. So um, so you're a Reiki master as well as a um, spirit attachment person. So you deal with those type of things. So um, first of all, let's talk about how you got into the paranormal field uh, specifically. What drew you into the field, first of all? Uh, Well, what brought me into the field, um, I live in a haunted house, of course. Um, So my house was built in 1897. And it was actually built by um, a man who had come home from the gold rush, the California gold rush, he struck gold. And he came home and he built this big, lavish house back in the day. So of course, there's a lot of history to our house. Um, And so with the years and years and the layers and layers of history, um, as old as our house is, we're only about the fifth family that lived in it, but there's all kinds of layers here and there's all kinds of spirits. And so I did um, eventually end up with some hauntings that I couldn't deal with myself. And back then when the things started, when activity picked up in my house, I didn't have any knowledge of anything. I didn't have any knowledge of energy work, of spirits, hauntings, nothing. I just knew what I would kind of see on TV or actually I would, I wouldn't really see things on TV because I'm kind of a nervous Nelly. I don't like scary shows. So I avoided ghost stories like the plague. So I really didn't know that much about hauntings or ghosts or spirits. And it was when we started to experience things in the house. And that's what um, brought me around to that. And I ended up, um, I found myself um, just kind of exploring different things, different um, topics. And one of the things that I really love to do is dowsing. And so I went to a dowsing convention where I happened to meet up with um, my Reiki master, the, the lady that trained me, and she ended up talking about spirits and attachment removals, which was completely like new to me. And when I watched her um, remove attachments from a whole group of people all at the same time, and you could feel the difference in the room after she did it, I kind of looked at her and I said, you know what, whatever that Reiki is, I need to learn that. 
And so that's, that was back in, I think it was 20, I want to say 20, around 15, 16, around there is where I started. That's interesting. I never really heard of it being done to a whole group in the past before. I've always heard of it one-on-one because you can focus in on the individual's energy. Is it different energy work well, dealing with a whole group than one single person? It really is. Um, well, it it can be. It depends on the attachments because, of course, there's some stubborn ones that need a little extra time and encouragement. Um, the Reiki that I practice is called Holy Fire. And there's not many uh, practitioners here in Atlantic Canada. Well, there's there's quite a few Holy Fire practitioners in New Brunswick, but in Nova Scotia, there's not a lot of us. And the energy from the Holy Fire is is quite um, high, like the vibration is quite high. So we are able to do groups of people at the same time. Like we're able, to, I'm, I'm able to work through distance and time and on groups as well because the vibration is just so high of the holy fire. So it, the holy fire Reiki allows you to spread the energy out further or is it more workable it's, it's that way? Higher, it's just a higher frequency. Mm. So it's just more refined. It's just really stronger. Okay, well, that makes sense. It's called holy fire. So I guess there'd be a lot more power to that type of Reiki than yeah. just the individual Reiki. Um, is it is there a different form that you use for a group to a single person? Like, is there different techniques that you use or is it the same? It's pretty much the same technique. It is pretty much the same technique as um, you would use the same thing. Yeah. No, well, that's cool. So um, back to your house then being haunted, you're living in an old historical home in Nova Scotia. So yeah. um, what drew you to the home? Was there something that so this kind of stood out to you about the house that was unique or did you maybe it's, sense the energy of it or yeah well it's actually my family's home um I care for my parents my parents are in their 90s and so I moved in with them so I live in their home my husband and I live with them um my mother was drawn to this house I always say the house picked the family the family did not pick the house um she had she lived in uh in town in a in a populated area and um she hated it there she hated it because her neighbor was like right on her doorstep and she said to my dad like i'm moving out to the country you can come or you can stay anyway she uh she got the she secured the funding she found there was a little tiny ad about one inch by one inch in the paper and she called the real estate agent and she said that's my house don't sell it i'm getting the money for it so uh she came out on I think she said it was New Year's Eve in a raging snowstorm. My dad didn't want to move here. He wouldn't drive out. His brother took her out to see the house. They couldn't even get in the driveway. And um, so, so all she saw was the outside of the house. And she bought the house because it just called her name. And so right away, she started experiencing hauntings. But it was just really... Um, just really innocent stuff. She would hear windows going up and down. Um, she would often see animals in the house. Uh, like, I mean, uh, like animals that didn't belong in the house. Like she'd see a bear walk through the living room. Yeah, so she saw all kinds of cool things. And then um, the activity kind of slowed down and it kind of, you know, just leveled out. And then, um, when I came and my daughter was a teenager, um, she is quite sensitive as well. And it really ramped up when she was a teenager. Yeah, things do tend to ramp up, um, especially when kids hit adolescence and stuff. Um, yeah. They start going yeah. through the changes and things, I guess, sense that. That's one of the theories in the field is that uh, spirits yeah. can sense that change and the energy grows stronger and it tries to attach to that because they're more open, yeah. right? So. Um, so what type of energies were coming through at the time when your daughter started experiencing things? Well, she um, she had some like some difficulties uh, growing up. So she was like really emotional at times. Um, we've seen I've seen uh, a, a Coke can like, she, you know, how they used to make the the memorabilia pop cans and people would save them. Well, she had one of these Coke cans on her shelf and 
like it was like a whole, you know, good condition, empty can. And I've seen it the next morning under her bed, crushed flat. And it, like it flew across the room under her bed. Um, a picture in a flat frame flew across the room and smashed. Um, one night she was sitting here. Actually, this is her old bedroom. This is my Reiki room now in the house. She was sitting here and out of the corner of her eye, she could see a hand coming out of the closet and it would go back in the closet. So she watched that for a while. Um, we've seen all kinds of things. We saw, like I have the black hooded creature. Um, he's been seen, he or she or it, I guess. It's been seen multiple times by um, so many people that have been in and out of the house people that didn't know any history about the house have never heard that it was haunted, nothing like people would mention this black thing hovering in the corner a lot. Um, we've had hat man here. He's, he's pretty, uh, pretty commonality is, is hat man. And we've had him here. Do you think the cloaked figure and the hat man are connected? Because I've heard of the hat man before in the past, but I haven't heard of a cloaked figure besides obviously death shrouded in a cloak um, yeah. or the Grim Reaper, as people call it. But um, have, do you think they're connected or do you think they're separate entities? I do. I do think they're connected. I actually think the hat man can take different forms. Um, because we do have a little girl and now my partner who's a medium has encountered the little girl and the hat man and she said that first she perceived the little girl and thought it was just a little girl and then realized she was kind of being controlled by hat man and she thought perhaps that um, she was like a, a puppet of this hat man and so I think he can take different forms and so I wouldn't be surprised if um, if that was the case, they were connected. Yes, and I just noticed your lights flickered a bit again <laughs> as you were talking. So I think there's energy still around. Oh um, yeah, making yeah. this presence yeah. known. But uh, does yeah. that happen? Does that happen quite often in your place where things will happen, like making you know those things? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. And then I had an experience. My husband was possessed actually once. Um, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> sure. Uh, tell us what happened there. Um, you mentioned that to me while we were talking before that you had yeah. a possession in your family. Yeah. So yeah. what, what happened? How do you think um, he managed to get possessed? Well, I know his history, like when he was younger, I think he kind of, um, I can't say that he kind of dabbled in like, uh paranormal and the occult and i don't i don't think he did anything bad he was just in you know just a, a teenager you know interested in you know what kids do with it you know anyway i think he had problems that followed him um from his early adulthood but uh when i met him and he came here he was also sensitive he could also see the spirits and the ghosts around here he still does in fact he hears them but um the night that it had happened I, and, and I'll tell you, I would never put, I, I would see it on TV, but I, I didn't believe it ever happened. I thought it was just something that Hollywood made up in the, the fact that I saw it in real life. And I had no experience. I, this was prior to um, any energy work I had done, any studying that I had done. Um, my daughter came out of the, the bathroom and she looked in the bedroom and I was laying on the bed and he was laying on the bed. We were just watching TV and she just went stone cold and she said, mom, get out of that bedroom right now. So I came out and I said, what's wrong? And she described this huge black winged creature. She said it was hovering like right above my face. She said it was like it was like right nose to nose with you. And so, so I left the bedroom and he was watching TV. And while that happened, she was still watching this winged creature. Um, she said it kind of looked like a cross between a dragon and a, I don't know, a bat. Anyway, she watched it. She watched it get sucked down his throat. And so then... Uh, I left the bedroom and I went and I said, well, I can't leave him in there. Like whatever is happening to him, I have to go in. Like he's my husband. I'm not leaving him. So I went back in 
and I sat on the bed beside him and it was like he was pinned to the bed. And he said, I think there's something wrong with me. He said, he said, I can't move. He said, I can't move my entire body. I said, well, like, what do you mean you can't move? I said, just get up. Like, there's nothing wrong. Get up. Because I was trying to um, pretend it hadn't happened. (laughs) I was trying to deny it. So uh, he tried to get up. He couldn't get up. And then all of a sudden, he completely zoned out. He didn't recognize me. He didn't know who he was. I was saying his name. And he was he was blank, like he didn't know me. And I'll tell you the thing that was the most disturbing. He has the nicest blue eyes. They turned jet black. And I watched them go from blue to black. And I'll tell you, that was pretty alarming. (laughs) No, that is not good if your eyes change to black, uh, especially if you've seen something enter the body as well. I mean, that's just amazing that you were able to physically see that happen. And... um, at that time, when he said he couldn't move, did he think that he was having something like sleep paralysis, or was it something else, no, or did he, he know? Or he actually thought that he had a stroke, and I did too. I went to the phone and I started to call nine one one, and I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if that's when my intuition started to develop, but I, I just kind of I felt like it wasn't a stroke. I, I felt like it wasn't. Um, because he had just been laying there, like no symptoms, nothing wrong with him at all. And for some reason, I, looking back, I'm thinking, gosh, I was crazy. I should have called 911 with those symptoms, but I didn't. Instead, I called a friend of mine who I had just had a reading with, and he was a psychic medium. And here it was in the middle of the night, and I didn't know him very well. So I called him and I said, like, what do I do? So he kind of talked me through how to get past that. And I did eventually um, get him out of bed, get him downstairs. I encircled him with white candles and salt, and I just kept praying. But in the meantime, I actually gave him a pen and paper, and I was asking him all kinds of questions. And so he was giving me, he was writing down these answers, and he has no knowledge of that now. Like, he can't remember it at all. But the answers he was telling me, he said that um, he was a teenage girl and that uh, he had died in the woods. He was coming to find his brother who was supposed to be visiting here and hadn't returned home. And he came out to find him and ended up dying, getting lost in the woods and dying of hypothermia. And so this was the story that he had written down as he was in this trance. But I kept doing prayers over him as as this guy had told me to do. And finally, he did come out of it. And I knew he was out of it when his eyes turned blue again. Yeah. And incidentally, about uh, six weeks later, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. After inhaling that black thing down his throat, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. Yeah, I think there always seems to be some negative type of side effect after you have an attachment like that. Like something always seems to happen, like you do get cancer, you you get a disease of some kind, or you start having tumors or something like that develops because that negative energy enters your body Mm -hmm. and takes control of you. So obviously, it leaves something behind as well. So yeah, um, definitely. if you manage to get rid of it, so... Yeah. Um, how long did it take for you to actually get rid of the attachment from him? Like the, the first initial attachment, how long did it get, take um, you to do that? You mean the night that it happened? Yes. It probably, I would guess it probably took about two to three hours, two to three hours of solid prayer. Yeah. So just praying helped remove it or that was and and now knowing what i know about reiki i know i could have done that in about half an hour with reiki um but that was just solid that was prayer and my intention is all i had at the time yeah because you don't know how to use reiki at that time so the only tool you had is prayer so yeah um 
is it the same type of energies that you remove from people? Like, is that the type of common energy you find is negative attachments? Or can you just get normal spirit attachment as well? Yeah, uh, generally any attachment is is not a good attachment because it's going to drain your energy. Um, a lot of times they're they're pretty innocent, um, but we have encountered uh, a good deal of really really negative ones. Yeah, um, we've in we've encountered, and I know a lot of people talk about demonic um, attachments. They're not as common as you think. But we have definitely encountered a few of them. Yeah. So how many would you say were demonic compared to a normal spirit attachment then that you've done? Um, I'd say we've done probably three to four that were demonic. And the rest of them out of, I don't know, maybe 20 cases. Three, three or four were demonic. That's quite a bit, actually, compared to how long you've been doing it for, because you've only started mm. since about 15, you said. So um, yeah. to have that many demonic cases in that short time, that's actually quite a bit, I think, because of how rare they actually are. It's like you don't go right off the bat and get a case and it's bad demonic. You have to investigate yeah. that first, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, how do you determine if something's demonic or if it's a normal spirit? Um. I determine it. Well, I can I can determine that through dowsing. I can douse the question to find out if it's demonic. Um, and I do we do work like I do work with my partner. Uh, she's a psychic medium. She can generally tell if it's demonic through um, like the series of questions and what the um, events have been. But I'm starting a little bit to come into my own to intuition and abilities. And if I like I have a few little telltale signs that I normally mean to me that things are demonic. Like if I see, if I close my eyes and I see pointy teeth, that's my sign that it's a demonic haunting. Yeah. And there'd be like other signs too that the person is showing, I guess that would determine what type of energy is attached to them right yeah they, they would be growling yeah. or they'd be doing weird positions or they would be um afraid of things like crosses and stuff like that right yes or is exactly, that all is yeah. that more hollywood or is that more what yeah. you've well a lot of that is uh, the, the, i think well, we haven't encountered the crosses uh we have encountered growling and in all of the cases that were demonic there was growling yeah and and actually my daughter's home um, was one of them that had a demon and there's been growling at her house. So that is kind of the general thing. Um, yeah, I, I think the growling is the big, <laughs> is the big telltale. <laughs> yeah. When you start praying and they start growling, I think that's a pretty good uh, indication that there is something negative there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so what would be the next steps then when you find out that you have a case that's demonic or negative that you're trying to do with? And um, do you go in by yourself normally or do you normally get a bunch of people together and do the whole cleansing or like what's the next step after that? Uh, well, usually um, we do have a team that goes in. Um, like I said, a lot of people um, with the residential houses, they want to know the story. Like, for me with the Reiki, I don't need to know the story. I don't need any, I don't need to know anything about their activity. I don't need to know what's going on. I can just go in, do the attachment removal. Um, but most of them, they want to know what's going on. They want to hear the EVPs. So usually our team will go in and they'll do pictures. They'll do EVPs. Um, we have two mediums on our team. So they usually go in and they do their thing. Um, oftentimes, they are able to talk it through. Um, I can do, if they don't want to talk it, if they don't want to go by, by talking, by counseling, um, I usually send Reiki to the situation. And people have to understand with demons, demons, because of the, because of the vibration of the earth is vibr is like raising now, like the Schumann residence of the earth is, is raising. Demons don't so much want to be here on the earth anymore. They basically want to go home. They don't want to be here. 
Um, I think they came, they came at a period in time of the earth development and they, they did, they served their purpose. They did what they were meant to do here. They have revealed the hate and the, and the fear. And I think they want to go home now. So demons aren't as hard to get rid of as people think. Um, most demons, they've, they've come from, we, we've all come from a place of love. So demons do essentially want to go back to love. I don't send demons back to hell. That's a big problem that I have with shows that they send demons back to hell. That's not what I'm about. They, I don't send demons to hell. I send them to the light for healing. And that's, that's how I work. And that's actually how our team works. Um, that's, that's just our belief system. So you believe that, um, that a demon with negative energy can be healed and they can become back to normal or what they used to be? Um, I've heard in the past that demons are non-human, so they come from a place not the same that we come from, right? So they can't go back to the same place and um, go back to the light, so to speak, but they come from a different place. So you believe more in it's possible for them to be healed and to go to the light? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. That's different because I've always heard that they cannot do that. They, they're, they're not human based. They're not human energy. Um, they've never been alive. So they can't go back to the place of being from a spirit and be healed. Right. Are they? Yeah. And that's, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's where the Holy fire is a little mm -hmm. bit different. That's okay. my belief system is that they can be healed because, and the reason I believe that to be true we are ascending. We are ascending from uh, the duality of fear and love. And we are ascending to pure love. We don't need the demons anymore. They have to go somewhere. And they like, they're not I, like, I'm not saying that the demons, like they come back to life and they're human, but I do believe they can go and be healed. I, I absolutely believe that. Okay, yeah, that makes a bit more sense that they're not going back to be human or they're not changing back into like a human No, entity. I don't think they're, no, 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 it, it's just energy. Like once energy goes, leaves the earth, it's just energy. Um, it'll be recycled. Like that energy, once he goes up to be healed, it's just recycled back to the earth into more earth energy. So you think these demons or negative energies just came from a place that made them that way and they can be changed the same way human energy can be changed i, I believe they can be healed not yeah. changed yes healed yeah. yeah healed yep right you change that energy yeah. back into being healed and um make them into something else like more positive energy yeah, yeah. Uh, what I do you think they become that. then after they get changed or become healed what do you think um happens after that <laughs> that i really i really don't know i guess that's up to god to me to me once they're released into uh the heavens that's up that's between god and the demon yep well hopefully they have a new purpose after that like they're not negative i i believe they do have a purpose after that yeah yeah that's if if i could ascend to that level of heaven i would love to have that answer <laughs> Well, hopefully that is one answer that we all get once we do cross into the light and we figure out mm -hmm. um, all those answers that we've been wondering when we're alive. Yeah. You know, exactly. what's after death? Is there life after death? Is there energy after death? What happens after? And I think that's the big question is what is after, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, um, so what type of investigations have you done besides the demonic cases? Have you had any type of cases where they're just normal spirits that you investigate and try to cleanse people's homes and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. The, the, the majority of our cases are just um, normal people that are just trapped here in this plane that, that are kind of in between the earth and, you know, their heaven. They're not... They're, they're nothing really, there's really nothing exciting about them. Um, you know, it's just draining energy. I find the most harmful thing they do, and the reason we release them, is because they drain human energy. 
And, and that's just the way it is. And it doesn't matter if it's your grandma. It doesn't matter if it's a total stranger. The fact of the matter is if a human is going to be, or if a spirit is going to be on this plane, they're going to drain your energy. So either way, it's best for them not to be trapped here. And um, how many cleansings do you do normally then if you go into residential areas and help a person out in their home? Um, how many have you done in the last little while? Has it, have you been busy with that? or? Um, we have been pretty busy. Like COVID kind of um, put, a, put a cap on that. But we're actually pretty lucky because we I, I can work from a distance. So, you know, even, you know, if somebody would call us with like a real big um, issue, like we had one recently, they had um, four kids that were really, really scared. So we're able to do um, clearings from a distance. And um, how did that case turn out? Were you able to help the family then that had uh, the kids involved? We did help them quite a bit. Um, and it, they, it did kind of flare up again. So uh, they ended up having to go back a few times. That was that was one that was, I actually only went to that case twice. Um, the, the mediums went there two more times after that. Um, what That was one that I found particularly stressful on my body because it kept, I... I feel spirits like when spirits touch me, it gives me kind of like a little a, a shock. And so there was so many in that house that when I walked through the hall, it just it felt like they were touching me all over. So I did have a I did have an issue going to that case, but I was able to um, do some clearings through that. And we actually haven't heard from them since. So we're assuming that the activity has stopped. Yeah, that's great that it can be done remotely, especially these days when you can't get into a person's home to help them. So um, that's wonderful. You're able to actually help people still through mm -hmm. remote Reiki and get that kind of work done still. Um, but thank you so much for being here today, Charlene. I appreciate you coming on the show and talking to us about some of your experiences with uh, your Reiki, as well as spirit attachment, and especially some demonic cases that you've covered. So really interesting stories today. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. No, thank you so much. And um, thank you for being our first guest on uh, season three. So uh, thank you for being here and uh, welcome back anytime as well. So have a great rest thank of your you. week. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And that was Charlene from Blue Moon Cottage. Uh, she joined us today to talk a little bit about her uh, Reiki that she does for people for healing, as well as about spirit attachment. And uh, some very interesting stories she shared today about some demonic cases as well. So um, really interesting to have her on as our first guest for Season 3, Episode 1 here today. And with that, it is a milestone here today on Haunted Life Podcast. It is our first episode of our third season, so I can't believe we're actually still running here, which is absolutely amazing. I uh, want to shout a big thank you to everybody that has supported us through our first and our second seasons. Um, if you missed any of our episodes, please go back and check out our past guests. We've had a lot of amazing content over the past year, and um, we've had a new guest each and every week here in the paranormal field. So if you like what you see here today, don't forget to leave us a like and also subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to also follow us on our other social media over on Facebook, Twitter, and also Instagram as well we post. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here today and checking out Haunting Live Podcast. And again, big thank you to our guest Charlene from Blue Moon Cottage. That's her group. And um, she also works with her partner's group as well in Nova Scotia on the east coast of Canada. So wonderful to have her on today to talk about stuff today. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Happy New Year. And take care and be safe in uh, 2022 as well. And don't forget to be back here each and every week for a brand new guest on Haunting Live Podcast. But with that, guys, take care. And we'll see you next week.
um, and began working with healing of the land and because it felt like such a massive project, started teaching everyone who wanted to learn. From childhood, I would see spirits, and I just felt like they were the extra people in my home. I had a hard time like sharing them. Uh, I grew up in the Bible Belt in South Carolina, and it's just not cool. <laughs> or it's frowned upon, it's, it's demonic, or ooh, you know, it's scary. I've always been a spooky kid. Um, I love everything paranormal. I can't, I don't have a memory where I didn't believe in magic and the paranormal. I use my intuitive abilities to help people identify their inner self. So have a deeper self-awareness. And through that, I'm able to um, help them see different perceptions and different um, belief systems that might be preventing them, you know, exploring their journey.